Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Snipes Killer, and welcome back to another tank review slash tank guide and today ladies and gentlemen I'm going to be reviewing the tier 8 premium tank the M46 Ripper Patton or M46 Patton Korea. And today I'm also going to be showing you what you can expect from this tank, what you could possibly pull off in this tank and what this tank's role is on the battlefield as a very very competitive medium tank. So ladies and gentlemen, for those who are new to the M46 Ripper Patton, this tank is a very, very competitive tier 8 American medium tank, boasting some very good gun depression and a very competitive 90mm gun, with decent penetration and pretty good accuracy and aim time. Now if you're wondering what the very, very competitive playstyle of this tank is, it is a very, very good support medium tank and it is very, very good at working ridgelines. This tank boasts amazing gun depression of around 8 degrees and a very, very good penetration gun. Meaning that any enemy tank that you come across while on your ridgeline adventures is going to have a tough time dealing with your rapid rate of fire, very good penetration, and decent turret armor that can pull off some pretty amazing bounces. One thing you want to keep in mind with the M46 Ripper Pat in Korea, ladies and gentlemen, is that even though you do have some pretty decent hull armor, it is best not to expose it too much as enemy tanks are going to have a very easy time penetrating your hull armor. And your best bet with this tank is to use that amazing gun depression and work the ridge lines as a very, very competitive medium tank and get some very good sneaky shots into your opponents. With the Ripper Patton, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta be very careful because some wrong moves means that this thing will easily get outflanked by wolf packs of medium tanks coming in from all sides. And considering you do not have an extremely well reload, this thing will easily get taken out on the battlefield when left alone and unsupported. So ladies and gentlemen, if this video intrigues you and you have a very good like for tier 8 mediums that have very competitive stats and are very good on the battlefield as a very good support tank, then stay tuned and if you have no indication of wanting to buy this tank or possibly play this tank in the future, stick around and I will tell you how to effectively take these things out while they have some pretty good gun depression and are working on the ridge lines. So ladies and gentlemen, if I have you intrigued, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this tank, the stats of this thing, and coming at the top is the hit points of 1450 hit points, meaning you can take quite a bit of shells in this thing before you have to pull back and maybe play a bit more cautiously using your 10 degrees of gun depression to easily pick apart enemies from ridge lines. As well, ladies and gentlemen, this tank only weighs 44.45 when fully equipped, giving it a pretty good specific horsepower of 18.22 with an 810 horsepower engine, which means most of the time you're usually going to be able to accelerate to your top speed limit of 48.3, and this very good engine power also gives you very good hull traverse speed of 38 degrees. That's pretty competitive for a medium tank in my eyes. Now one of the kind of very bad factors about this tank is actually the armor on it. You have 101 on the front, the hull, and the turret. You got 76 on the sides of the turret and the hull armor and 76 on the back of the turret and 50 on the back of the hull, which means this tank is not very good at taking hits. The armor is not thick enough at tier 8 to be able to pull off just absolutely miraculous bounces, even though you can get some pretty good bounces in this thing. The gun mantlet can sometimes pull off some pretty good bounces, but unfortunately it is not too thick and can still be penetrated by very high penetration guns, especially the kinds of guns that you're going to be seeing at tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10. Which brings me to the point that this tank does not also get preferential matchmaking. You will see tier 10s and more likely than not you will be facing tier 9s and tier 10s most of the time when you're playing this tank. So ladies and gentlemen, checking out the armament on the M46 Ripper Patton, it has a 90mm gun, very competitive with 192mm of average standard shell penetration, 243 with APCR and 45 with high explosive giving a very good damage range with 240 average damage per shot as well you get a 0.38 dispersion which is pretty big of a dispersion for a medium tank and a 2.5 second aiming time so the gun may have some pretty bad stats but it still performs very well it is still a very accurate gun 
and it can still hit weak spots very, very well. As well as being comparable to the Pershing, this thing has very good view range of 390 meters as its base standard. Which means that more likely or not you're going to be able to spot enemies before they spot you with your good view range, especially if you want to equip something such as like coated optics or binoculars. Now what kind of equipment loadout should you take on this tank? Well considering that it is a medium tank and does have kind of a bad rate of fire, I totally recommend that you go for a medium caliber gun rammer, vents, and vertical stabilizers. And the reason behind this is because you want to be able to pump out a lot of shots and be able to just whittle down your enemies with that 240 alpha damage and you also want the vertical stabilizer to kind of negate that 0.38 accuracy and the 2.5 second aim time considering this thing gives you a 20% bonus while moving and deterring the turret meaning that you'll be able to aim in a lot faster and take your shot a lot faster especially since you'll have a better rate of fire with your rammer and vents on this thing now if you're asking the question, well why should I buy this tank? Well let's take a look at it and compare it to some other tier 8 mediums as well as the tier 8 Pershing and see what it does versus these kinds of tanks. Alright so ladies and gentlemen, using Tanks GG and the reference tank of the M46 Pat in Korea, we're going to be comparing this thing to probably more some of the popular premium tanks as well as some pretty standard tanks such as the M26 Pershing, the AMX CDC, the STA2, the T-54 Mod 1 and the Panzer 58 Mutz which has just came out. Now starting it off here, we can see that the M46 Patent Korea actually has probably one of the lowest DPMs on this thing, only slightly lower than the Mutz and only slightly higher than the M26 Pershing. As well, this gun has pretty decent penetration, I would say 2mm better than the standard M26, quite a bit less than the CDC up there at 212 better than the STA-2 and the Mod-1, but also less than the Panzer 58 Mutz. As well, all across the board, the damages are pretty much all the same, except for the Mod-1 coming in at 10 hit points higher on the Alpha damage, and as well we can see that it has some pretty bad weapon handling. Here we can see it has 2.4 on the website, compared to the 2.5 that we've seen in-game, which is just a bit worse, just a little bit worse than the T-54 Mod 1, as well as the accuracy is just a bit worse than every other tank, pretty much all of them pulling in at .35 to .33, with only this M46 Patton Korea coming in at .36. So one thing that people may not realize about this tank, it is very accurate when moving. When driving forward it has .012, when turning your tank it has .012, and when tra traversing the turret it only has .08, which is pretty good, meaning that you'll be able to aim in a lot faster than a lot of other enemy tanks, and you'll be able to shoot a lot more reliably when moving your tank. Now the movement speed of the Patton Korea is quite comparable to a lot of the other tanks, such as the M26 Pershing STA-2, the first prototype, and the Mutz, coming in at 48 going forward, 20 going backward, which is pretty good, and having the second highest engine power out of all these tanks at 810, giving it again that 18.52 power to weight ratio. So checking out the armor characteristics of the M46 Ripper Patton here, it only ha again has the 101 on the front, 76 on the sides, 50 on the rear of the armor, and 76 on the rear of the turret, which is only a little bit worse than that regular M26 Pershing, coming in at 127 on the front of the turret, which is more than likely going to be able to bounce some pretty good shots. This thing is not armored like the Russian first prototype coming in at a very good results here. 180 on the turret front, 120 on the front of the tank, 120 on the sides of the turret, and all these other values. But the one thing that the Ripper Patton does have going for it, again, is its hit points. It has more hit points than all of these other tanks, meaning it can take a lot more shots and a lot more punishment before being taken out in the battlefield. As well, all the view ranges are pretty good across the board, only coming in 10 worse than the M26 Pershing. So ladies and gentlemen, now knowing the stats of the M46 Ripper Patton, we're going to take a look at some battles that I've had in this thing, and kind of show you what you can expect to do in this tank. Now they're not going to be the best battles, but they're going to show you what's really going to happen more than likely when you play the Ripper Patton, both in Tier 10 battles and Tier 8 battles. Without further ado, let's check out what happens in Tier 8 battles when playing the Ripper Patton. 
Alright, so welcome to our first battle in the M46 Patent Korea here on Swamp with a pretty decent tier 8 match. Got some very dangerous tanks on the team, such as an ISU, some M46 Patent Korea, there is an IS6 as well. And what our plan is of attack is to go up to the very northeast of this map and use our good gun depression on that corner. Now we do have quite a bit of support coming with us too, we got some pretty good medium tanks coming with us which have some pretty good gun depression except for the T-34-3 coming in at very bad gun depression, I think it only has about 6 degrees. But nonetheless this is a support medium tank, the M46 Pershing, or M46 Patton, <laughs> mind you, does very good at supporting friendly tanks. And these are the kinds of situations you want to be in. You want to have plenty of uh, friendly tanks to be able to help you take on some very dangerous tanks, such as the ISU and the IS-6, which both decided that it would be a good idea to come up here. And keep in mind that this gun does have, again, that .36 or .38 accuracy, whichever one is the correct one. Which means, more likely than not, you're going to be able to hit your enemies very nicely and do very good damage with a 240 alpha. Now being a support tank, you obviously want to go and support your friendlies. So I pull up, trying to help this WZ-131 take on this ISU, the Comet, and the IS-6 that are both up here, and now there's a T-54 Mod 1. And my team is pulling a very, very good strategy here. While we're distracting them up here, they are flanking around going to be able to take all these guys on and we bounce a shot from the IS-6 which your armor can do it can sometimes at extreme angles bounce some pretty high caliber guns such as that 122 and with that flanking maneuver and that ammo rack on the ISU it means that we can put in some good shots into that side of the mod 1 and try and go for a tracking shot on that IS-6 but we're pulling up now completely surrounded, these guys have pretty much nowhere to go. And we're just easily able to pick on them and take big chunks of hit points out of them. And they're just absolutely helpless. And this is what you want to do in your M46. You want to be that kind of distraction while still performing pretty well. You want to kind of use your gun depression and use your good mobility to be able to support your friendlies. So with that just little engagement, we were able to pick up 1,485 damage, only took one shell from that IS-6, and we were able to bounce one of his shells as well. But yeah, this is what you want to do in your M46 Ripper Patton. This thing is, of course, a support medium tank. Again, it is very competitive. It has pretty good rate of fire and decent reload of about like 6.5 to 7 seconds. The good accuracy means that you can pull off some pretty good shots with it. And uh, and just you could just pick on your enemies. Fortunately, unable to pick up a kill on that guy. But these videos are most likely just to show you what you can do in the M46 Ripper Patton. They're not meant to be extremely good replays. They're meant to show you what more than average happens in these kinds of tanks. And definitely, this again, this tank is a support tank. And just with this wave of friendlies going in, we're going in to support them as best we can. But it doesn't seem like they need too, too much support. And with that little ricochet there, that means we can pull up. Mutz isn't too keen on getting shot. But with that, that is our victory. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this first replay here. It's kind of just, these replays are to show you what the average player can do in the M46 Ripper Patton or M46 Patton Korea. Again, very competitive medium tank. We can see that we did actually take a shot in our gun mantlet there. I think that was probably the shot that bounced us from the IS-6. And luckily, with our good supporting team and being a good support tank, also, distracting those enemy tanks while we were flanking around them means that we can easily take them out and take on this victory. So good job to my team for pulling off that flanking maneuver. It's very rare to see flanking maneuvers by teams of this kind of caliber, but they did a very good job. Thank you so much to them for supporting me. 
and we're going to quickly check out the post battle results screen to show you guys what the average player will make just doing this little bit of damage, around 1600 damage to 2000 damage. And considering this is a premium tank, you will be able to make some premium credits, which means you get a 50% bonus to the credits you make and a 50% bonus to the experience you earn. So without further ado, let's take a quick look and see how we did. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, like I said, not the best replay, but still a very average replay to show you guys what the average player will be able to do in this tank. We were able to pick up a third class mastery badge, fire for effect, and also a confederate medal for doing a lot of damage to a bunch of different enemy tanks, at least six enemy tanks. Checking out the team score here, we can see that we got third on damage, so not too bad, 1717 damage. Is a, is a pretty decent number for damage to do, especially in this short of a game, being the support tank that we were supposed to be, and getting ourselves pretty good experience. 834 experience isn't too bad. Now, even though we only did this much damage, and we did actually block 390 from that IS-6, and do a little bit of assistance damage, this tank made monstrous amounts of credits. 76,000 income just for 1,700 damage, and you've made 70,700 755 credits as well with premium account if you go so choose to have a premium account you're gonna get a bonus on your experience giving us a 2267 experience income that's a lot of experience especially if you're using this tank to grind out free experience or maybe even train your premium or non-premium American medium tank crews so this is a really helpful tank especially making just credits and experience and definitely a tank you should pick up this is just one of the battles we could possibly have what happens when you throw this tank into a tier 10 game all right so ladies and gentlemen welcome to our second replay this time we're in a tier 10 battle we have pretty much I believe we have a superior team we have pretty good players in their top tier heavies the enemy team has some pretty good players as well but this is this is kind of what you got to expect to have decent results in these kinds of games. Like, tier 10 games usually don't always go this way, so when you're in this tank, you definitely need to play support. Now, the main problem with this replay right now is the fact that all my team is pretty much going to the middle and going to the south. Meanwhile, the north is completely undefended, so being a... A semi-aware player. Semi-aware player of the map and seeing that there's only a T-34 and maybe a 140 who might stay there to defend the base, I am going back and I'm going to use my gun depression on the M46 Patton Korea to support these guys. Turns out the Object 140, yeah, he's a pretty good player, but he doesn't want to stay here and do nothing. He wants to get his good games in his 140 and pretty much remain a good player because that's what good players want to do. They want to be good and they want to support the team. And it looks like he is going to actually support the team. But I'm choosing a very odd location to go to. A lot of t I usually see a lot of tanks going to this location, but I've never seen an M46 Pat and Korea go up here. And I can kind of see why. This hill is a little bumpy here. It's kind of hard to point the gun down, which means it's going to be kind of hard to support this T-34 if the enemy team just comes rolling around the corner right now, which means I can't shoot anybody. Considering I might have to expose a lot of my tank, which I really, really don't want to, even though I'd have a good shot from right there, I just I don't want to expose all my tank. Because if you see... All the way from down here, you can see a bunch of my tank. All I want to expose is my turret. So if I do get lucky and I'm able to bounce shots from any like tier 10, tier 9, or tier 8 tanks that come down this way, I want to have the maximum chance to bounce shots. And that was pretty much just a waiting game. We're waiting to see who's going to be coming up this way. The bridge is wide open, which means that there could possibly be some very dangerous tanks coming down the bridge way. And if they do decide to do so, they could easily come by, kill the artillery, kill this T-34, and kill me, and maybe even cap out the base if they have the support. But we can see that I believe the T-34 spotted this IS-4, and he puts in a really good shot there, probably firing some APCR to make sure that he penetrates these guys. Which is probably what I'm going to end up doing pretty soon. Get a critical hit on the M103, luckily he misses. That would have been a very big damaging shot that I would not want to take. But we can see the accuracy kind of failing me here. I kind of wanted to shoot at the upper plate considering I am above the M103. 
but it didn't seem like it wanted to work. So I'm like, okay, let's load some APCR. I want to do damage to these guys. And that's what APCR is going to do. That 243 millimeters of penetration is probably more than enough to go through the front of an M103. Even at this kind of angle and from this kind of height, I could probably easily go through his upper plate. Using a little bit of target priority here, the M103 is a very dangerous target, but he has way too much hit points to try and deal with. So I wanted to take a shot at this Pat in Korea, and now I have to go and help this T-34. APCR still loaded, shooting at the engine deck of this IS-4. He needs to go away and die, because this T-34 is my only, only helping surviving member on this side. He ends up dying. The artillery ends up shotgunning the IS-4, and the M46 Pat in Korea on the enemy team gets taken out by me. Now I'm in a very bad spot here. The M103 could probably come up this hill and get a good tracking shot into me, which means I could probably just fall down the hill and hopefully not take any damage. The tracks actually absorbed a lot of that damage. But considering I'm down here and our team is flanking this M103, and there's also a Lurver down there, who hasn't been spotted yet. There he is. Means we're able to get over here and get shots into the lower plate of the M103 and bounce a shot from him. That is what I wanted to do with my turret when I was up on the hill. Giving me the better chance to be able to block shots with it and do more damage while pretty much maintaining my hit points and supporting this T-34. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, like I said, these replays are going to be more of average replays of what the average player will expect to do in the M46 Pat in Korea. These are mostly going to be support videos, considering this tank, again, is very competitive when supporting. Especially when using some pretty good equipment on this thing, you're going to be able to get some good shots out, be able to get some shots into lower plates of enemy tanks, such as these M103, even though we did have to use APCR and you're still going to be able to do quite a bit of damage if your team is fairly competent and can easily take out the enemies like my team did here on the south easily wiping out the enemy team and allowing them to come back from down there and from up here and be able to take out this M103 and the Lurver very very quickly and very effectively so good job to them thanks so much for them for getting this victory and again only doing an average amount of damage we did I believe like 1400 damage to this one so let's check out the post battle results screen and see how much money we made off of this one considering we were shooting at tier 10s all right so welcome to the second post battle results screen unfortunately not as good as the first one we did do a little bit less damage which means we made a little bit less income and checking out the team score here we are actually quite down low considering we were the only one pretty much trying to support down below with this t-34 who unfortunately got taken out by that is4 and this is the kind of things you have to expect. Considering I was in a tier 8 medium, I wanted to try and just kind of cover the flanks. When you're on kind of the bottom of the list, you kind of have to do that. You have to be support slash flank cover, which means I wanted to support the flank, which means kind of I didn't get the best result, which is okay by me. It's still a victory, and it's still a pretty decent game. Again, only 1,486 damage. We did block a shot from the M103 off our turret. Did a little bit of assistance damage, not too much. And considering we did actually fire APCR, which is quite expensive, means that we made less credits of only 33,150, which you gotta be careful with your APCR consumption. Especially when firing APCR, if all you're going to do is, even in your premium tanks, you're just going to lose money. So we're going to take a look at one more replay, ladies and gentlemen. This one's going to be more of a carry situation, and we're going to see what happens to this player when he's playing his M46 Pat in Korea. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our third and final replay. And here I just grabbed a good replay I saw off of worldoftanksreplays.com of Ice-T Kai in his M46 Pat in Korea. Quite an awesome player here. He's a very nice guy too. Accidentally runs into the M20 T25 at the beginning of the game, and he even apologizes for it. And the MT25 is like, yeah, it's okay. It's just dying keyboard problems and all that. Now, what's going to be so special about Ice T Kai? Well, we're going to check it out. He's playing on the, I believe, Muravanka map. Tier 8 battle, very tier 8 battle. He's a pretty good player in this matchup. He's going to a very 
It's kind of open, yet still very hilly location where he can use this gun depression to his most uttermost advantage. You can see here he's trying to find shots on this FCM or even Comet. Maybe even the 12 ton too. Again, more tanks over there. He's just trying to find shots on something. Nothing spotted so far. Got a VK-3001D there. Very slowly making his way across and he's able to get a good shot onto him. 250 damage to that guy. Not bad. A little bit above average of a roll. Again, still trying to find shots. He's trying to get into a good location to find shots to get on these guys. Had a little bit of a shot on the comet he saw there. Not anymore, though. Looks like he might have been pulled back behind the ridge line. And now he's going to move up and support this lurver. Again, this tank is a support tank. I cannot stress how important it is to know that this tank is a support tank. And again, it works ridge lines extremely well. And which is what Ice T Kai is going to be doing here. He's going to be working this ridge line on this IS3 and Ferdinand. That 12 ton is nowhere to be seen. He probably bugged out of there as soon as he saw this monstrous amount of tanks coming over here. Including the Carnarvon, the SU 100 YIS 3, and even the Lurver. Ice T Kai pokes up, takes a shot in the IS 3. The bush does no work for him, considering he's so close. Taking shots like that, easily gonna get him spotted. But this IS 3 has no hope of getting another shot off, and he is taken out. Next is the Ferdinand, completely outnumbered. His friendly friendly teammates on his team just absolutely abandoned him and he's absolutely alone over here just getting bum rushed by all these tier hates oh I, I feel for him it's got to be so sad to lose such a good tank like that very well armored just being absolutely bum rushed because your team doesn't want to support you now ice t kai is in his in a very very particular situation right now the enemy team has control of the forest and they are now going to be contesting his cap. He has pretty good spotting range which means he's probably going to be able to spot quite a bit of these guys. Trying to get some shots on the Korea here too. Trying to take him out considering he has a very dangerous tier 8, tier 8 medium tank that needs to be taken out. He's rushing his shots a little bit, bouncing, but thankfully the return fire from the patent Korea bounces as well. Again, working the ridge line here, trying to find shots on these enemy tanks. Looks like he might have a shot on that M4. And he's nicely able to take him out, getting his second kill there. 1,203 damage, but the game is not even close to being over. The amount of work that has to be done to try and win this game is phenomenal. It's 5 to 9. Both teams are in the cap, and both teams are actually contesting against defending their own cap. The FCM and Comet are both going back to defend against the T-44. And the IS-3, the Lurver, and Ice-T Kai right here is going back to defend their own base. You can see that the 12 ton was spotted a little earlier. He's now here trying to defend the base. The IS-3 is going to be very mad, considering he wasn't able to spot him from like 10 meters away. It was ridiculous. Ice-T here tries to get a shot on that M50, N46 Korea, unfortunately unable to get a shot there. It seems like he's able to get a shot in this Comet though. Takes a good chunk of HP out of him, now he's wanting to go for this Korea. This Korea's on pretty low health, which means he'll easily be able to take him out in two hits, but luckily the IS-3 is able to take him out, and now we're even in a worse situation. Scores are 8 to 12. Heist, he's really lucky he scored that shot there. Every little bit of damage from now on is going to count. M12 takes a huge chunk out of that Tiger 1, and Ice T's able to put in a nice snapshot there into him. Now he's trying to defend against almost two fronts here. He's trying to defend against the ARL, Lurver, and Carnarvon, as well as the Comet, but thankfully the IS-3 is still alive and is able to be able to spot enemy tanks that are crossing out through over there. Ice-T is able to put in a good shot to the ARL. He's going to try and poke up again, but he takes an AP hit and an APCR hit from the ARL. But knowing that the ARL has nowhere to go, he's able to put in a blind shot into him and finish him off. Now it's time to deal with this Carnarvon, and the Comet is spotted right in front of him. 
gets a really lucky snapshot there, putting it, I think, right into the mantlet or the lower turret of that comet there. And now he has good side shots on the Kinervan. Unfortunately, he misses his first shot there. Comet seems more occupied with that IS-3. Puts another shot into the Carnarvon and then realizes that this Comet is not even paying attention to him. So he's easily going to be able to come over and just plant a shot right into him and bounce a shot. AP, APCR shot from that FCM. Puts a shot into the liver and now things again even getting worse. And the M12 being an awesome teammate takes out the Carnarvon. But now it's just Ice-T and this M12 versus a very healthy Lurver. Or was very healthy, now he's below half health and still an FCM on about a two shot for Ice-T here. He knows that Lurver isn't really going to be moving. And he takes another blind shot, resetting the cap yet again. Now he's going to try and go up to spot him. He gets spotted instead and does not spot the Lurver, but this is a really weird thing. The Lurver exit the, exits the cap, and Ice-T doesn't even take a single hit. That's very weird. He's very lucky he didn't take a hit there, and the M12 is waiting for spots. He's probably almost reloaded and wanting to take a shot at this Lurver. There's the Lurver outside the cap circle, just sitting there, not really doing anything. So Ice-T has to try and keep him spotted for this M12, but he also has to try and not take any hits takes a hit there unfortunately I think the Lurver blind shot at him considering both of them were unspotted and not spotted during the moment the shots were exchanged he's able to spot him again he luckily doesn't get spotted again and now the M12 is almost probably ready to fire is he going to be able to take him out Ice-T is like M12 try and take him out he really wants this Lurver to die he's very close to getting shot at and the M12 takes out the Lurver, but now there is an FCM 50 ton going right for this M12, and this is going to be very, very bad. He bounces, and the M12 is going to get really into the game right here. Just, just listen to this. Listen to what he has to say for this. He says sorry, first of all. Ice-T kind of misses, and he bounces and misses again. And the M12's like, with cat-like tread, our pawn, our prey, we steal. He must win, please. <laughs> he must be so into the game. He's so disappointed that he died. He's like, come on, just win. Please, just win for us. And Ice-T is going to do his very best. He wants to spot this FCM. A single shot will kill him. There he is. Please take your time. And it misses by an inch. By an inch and misses. And he's so upset. Has to be very careful, the F-51 has a very big gun and nicely misses there. Which gives him plenty of time to relocate and try and find a better angle of attack. The M12 and his team are even cheering him on. They're like, okay, no stress, take your time, play for time. And he's like, you know what, thanks. Thanks M12, you're being an awesome teammate. And so what he's going to do... Is he going to reload APCR, his first rounds of APCR that he's going to be firing this game, and he's relocating to a better position. Now he really needs to spot this FCM before he gets spotted. The FCM could probably easily put two shots into him before this guy can even fire, unless he is able to spot him. Moving up even closer, the FCM does probably have some pretty good view range. Is he going to be able to spot him? Nothing in the cap circle, nothing spotted yet. Is the FCM still going to be over in those bushes, or is he going to be flanking? He is still over in the bushes! Take your time with this shot. This is a very important shot. Take your time. Good side shot and takes him out. Nice shot there, gets spotted, and now he has to run. The S-51 takes a shot and lands nowhere near him. And this is pretty much, this has got to be so satisfying. He's wanting to know where this S-51 is. The enemy team's even telling him where they are. And he gets so mad at that. And he's probably going to report that enemy comet. Even the enemy team wants to report the comet. They want the S-51 to win probably just as much as Ice-T Kai here. 
He's doing a really good job here. He's even employing the tactic of staying outside the cap circle, not telling the S-51 where he is, and he's flanking around. Considering the S-51 is going to be pointing to his last known location, he's going to pull up to the side of this S-51. He's going to pull sideways. He sees him, gets a nice auto-aim tracking shot there, and the most satisfying victory you could possibly ever have in your M46 patent Korea ends with ice t Kai playing with his food on the S-51 and easily taking him out. So congratulations to ice t Kai here for such an amazing victory. Unfortunately, I was un unable to find my own very good replays of the M46 patent Korea, but thankfully I hope this replay will suffice enough, and we're going to check out the post-battle results screen to see how ice t Kai did in this replay and see what he got for just this amazing carry in this game. Alright ladies and gentlemen, checking out ice t Kai's amazing replay here on the post-battle results screen. He got a mastery badge, unsurprisingly doing an amazing job in this replay. He got spotter for spotting over a thousand hit points of damage. He got confederate, high caliber, the top gun medal for scoring over six kills. Checking out the post battle results screen here ladies and gentlemen, we can see that he picked up 5,032 damage, seven kills, and 17 hundred and six base experience that is absolutely amazing result for this tank shot 35 29 hit 25 penned which wasn't too bad got 1364 assistance damage and without even a premium account firing almost no apcr one apcr shell he fired to finish that fcm he made 77,000 credits with a premium account he would have made 125,000 credits in one battle now if that is not cause enough to get this tank then i really don't know what is so ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed those replays but like i said now that you've seen what the m46 patent Cree can do how do you take this monster out with amazing gun depression how are you going to be able to take this thing out well let's take a look Taking a look here at its armor models, you can only see that around the gun melee there is this very light pink square and it is only 120 to 119 millimeters thick and angled it's only about maybe 130 at a decent angle but it's still pretty easy to penetrate. When you're looking at the front of this tank on the turret you don't want to shoot this outer edge, you want to shoot closer to the gun but yet again not directly on the gun and you don't really want to shoot the sides of the turret too much. These are most likely going to be your bouncing spots, the spots where you do not penetrate even though it is pretty, it's pretty thin but if he moves this turret around a little bit you're probably going to end up bouncing. Taking a look at the hull armor here we can see that again very very thin hull armor, very thin gunner port here, only 77 millimeters and angled this armor is only about 130 and the base plate, the bottom plate is actually pretty thick right in the middle so try and shoot a little bit closer to the sides and not so much towards the middle because it is a little bit thicker at about 153 on level terrain. Now pretty much anywhere else, if you have side shots on this tank, definitely take your shots at the turret and the sides of the tank. There's pretty much no spaced armor here, except for the tracks, but try and not to shoot at the tracks, because they will absorb your penetration and they probably will do no damage. If this tank is taking on a ridgeline and you're fighting him on a pretty much on a surface to where you have no advantage over him, definitely shoot at the gun mantlet. The gun mantlet might be able to bounce a few shots, but more likely than not, if you penetrate closer towards the gun, you're going to easily, easily be able to go through it, and he'll have no chance of fighting back even if you are shooting at his turret. But ladies and gentlemen, I would love to thank you so much for watching this review, and hopefully this has satisfied your curiosity about the M46 patent Korea, maybe even made you want to buy it, and hopefully give you an indication of how to take this thing out on the battlefield, even though it does work very well on ridgelines, and hopefully you guys now find out how to play this tank more as a support medium, instead of more of an assault gun kind of tank. This thing does very good as support, and I hope you guys extremely enjoyed this. But thanks again so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video or maybe on one of my live streams. And I guess I will see you guys later. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you later. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.